that John Roberts is one of the most successful political animals in our system, and he put that line in there explicitly to confuse the press as to what he's doing. What can you say other than the fact that uh, the right wing is uh, celebrating this? Uh, they truly, really do believe that um, uh, all their children who didn't get accepted into uh, uh, Ivy League schools and other elite colleges, the only reason that could be is because affirmative action gave their kid's spot to a black or Latino person who they feel does not deserve to be in that spot. But I, I, I tweeted this out first thing because it's not going to change a thing when it comes to their pers the rights perception of who gets accepted to schools. Even with affirmative action officially over in college with, with college admissions, you will still hear from right wingers who will claim, oh, they're, they're, they're secretly still doing it. They're secretly still doing uh, affirmative action. Whenever there is uh, some sort of story or just a black or Latino kid happily announces online that they got accepted to an elite school and they're, the, the, the racists' kids uh, were not accepted. They'll automatically still assume something. I mean, it already happens. Uh, there was, there was that, that, that woman, she, her, uh, that girl who Abigail claimed that— Fisher. Yeah, that, I mean, she, it literally already happens, even when it, affirmative action is not uh, even possible in a scenario where uh, they complain that they or their kid did not get into a college. I mean, mm -hmm. the one thing I hope that maybe this does is I really do hope uh, that, uh, and, and it's not going to happen, but, you know, my, my best case scenario, Mr. Brightside over here, I really do hope this is like would be like a, a chip in the idea that um, these elite colleges and Ivy League schools actually matter. They actually determine uh, who is really smart or who deserves a high paying gig because, you know, some of these fucking tech VCs who seem to, you know, have an opinion on everything and run everything, they're all from, uh, uh, you know, uh, elite colleges and schools and universities. Uh, all these fucking idiots that we have to deal with now are from all, uh, you know, the, these schools and clearly they aren't any brighter than um, people who, who don't go to college or go to community college or just go to a regular four-year institution that's not an elite or a prestigious school. Yeah, um, there still is affirmative action, but it's for privileged white people. Um, and AOC had a really yes. good point about this. You know, uh, the 70% of legacy admissions are white people. That was not abolished. So this isn't about fairness. And it's it's honestly, it's an embarrassment, right? Um, because this is like going back to the Abigail Fisher case that Matt brought up. Um, this is what white people and racists, quite frankly, have been using as an excuse for their own mediocrity, right? Abigail Fisher is somebody <laughs> who did not get into the University of Texas in Austin after her daddy went, after her big sis went. And so rather than um, realizing that she didn't perform in the top 10% of her own class to get in herself and was insufficient, she claimed it was due to racism. She was a white woman and the whiteness is what sunk her ultimately because we know that being white in this country is very, very bad. Um, and this is the way that it's always been, right? I think that uh, David Dole shared a great article from Eli, uh, Ellie Mastal where he talks about how he was there in college and then the, this white person whose name was on a fucking building was telling him how he basically got there, didn't deserve to be there. It, it's just, it's it's so ridiculous. Like there's this assumption that affirmative action is to favor mediocrity, somebody who doesn't work better. When that's not it, like people have this perception of affirmative action, which is insane to me, that it's like, okay, well this kid, this white kid with a 4.0 GPA, he's gonna get denied. So this uh, black kid with a 2.5 GPA gets in. That is not how it works. That's never been how, it's wor how it works. The way that it works is, race can be one of many factors after the initial factors are first discussed and it could be seen as a benefit not the main thing so there's extracurricular activity sat scores your gpa and then also for the first time they can use race as a positive as opposed to a negative which is how it's been historically where it's like okay well this person is from an indigenous community they've been historically left out we could bring them in. But because that threatens the you know racial hegemony of white people in this country, they just couldn't accept it. And the irony of this whole fucking story is that do you want to know who benefits the most from affirmative action? 
white people. White it's women. white women. Yeah, white women. White women. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's not necessarily bad because gender inequality is an issue. Women have been historically been left out of education and employment. So ironically, like black people are getting blamed by conservatives, right, for affirmative action and whatnot, when in actuality, they didn't benefit as much like affirmative action. It's a meager attempt to right this historical wrong. Uh, it didn't really do a lot to add inclusion. So we need to go further. But we're going backwards. Like we can't even have fucking baby steps in this country. It's it's really honestly I got, frustrating. I got the study in front of me right now. And this is from uh, it's been published now by NBC. It says study from Harvard finds 43 percent of white students are either legacy athletes related to the donors or the staff. And that number drops dramatically for black, Latino and Asian American students with less than 16 percent each coming from those categories. The study said so there is already affirmative action, but it's affirmative action in kind of like nepotism. And uh, hey, yeah. Yeah, you were here. Yeah. your dad was here. He was a he was a bad person. But you yeah, hopefully be won't be. You'll be good. And we should be clear that this this deals specifically with race based uh, admissions, as opposed to right. you know. Th so th this this actually doesn't you know this doesn't. So that the idea I saw some people replying to Ole. Ole brought up how white women benefit from um, affirmative action. This doesn't touch that. This is specifically about race. So right. it is a specifically racist uh, decision here. And I also saw um, there's some uh, you know idea out there because. Uh, Roberts in in the decide in the decision said that actually this still there's still a lane for schools to uh, uh, allow uh, this sort of affirmative action just not in the way it's been done. But Ali Mistal, who was on uh, MSNBC, who by the way, when it comes to any SCOTUS decision, I usually go to Ali Mistal because he is uh, an expert in this field specifically. So I want to bring up his response to that argument that this uh, somehow still allows uh, these sorts of um, admissions. Early defenders of John Roberts will say, hold on, the court does say colleges can consider an applicant's, quote, discussion of how race affected his or her life, so long as they are treated based on his or her experiences as an individual, not on the basis of race. What's your reaction to that caveat from John Roberts? That John Roberts is one of the most successful political animals in our system, and he put that line in there explicitly to confuse the press as to what he's doing. The incongruity of that statement should be obvious. He's saying that colleges can care about diversity, but he's taking away the way that colleges care about diversity, right? He's taking away the actual policies and programs that allow colleges to do what Roberts says they can totally do if they want to, right? So again, it's, it's, it's a faint. It's a way to kind of shape the narrative in the press on the ground, as you already mentioned, we have examples, we have evidence for how this is going to play out in California, in Michigan, in other states that have banned affirmative action. And we see that diversity goes into the tank. And that's what Roberts wants. That's what these six conservatives want. They don't care about the diversity. They don't care about the 14th Amendment's racially ameliorative um, programs, right? Like, People need to understand, affirmative action, the first time that happened in American history was during Reconstruction. And the people who promulgated affirmative action during Reconstruction passed the 14th Amendment so that they could have these policies like affirmative action in the 1866 Civil Rights Act. And the 14th Amendment was explicitly designed to allow these policies and now the conservatives are taking the 14th Amendment away and kind of redeploying it, not to foster racial equality, but to make mediocre white kids feel a little bit better when they apply to Harvard. That's that's the upshot so, of this rule. Bingo. I mean, it's, yeah. even with affirmative action, people of color, black Americans, indigenous people, they still have to work twice as hard to get half as far. But this small little Band-Aid solution which didn't even do as much as people thought it did you can't even have that in this country that's how racist this country is it's it's really sickening and then at the same time you have people like tim pole flipping it and saying well if you support affirmative action you're racist because it, this is racism against white people uh, it's just we can't we, we can never have a serious conversation uh in this country if this is the way that things always turn out it's just it's honestly really frustrating and i think that the naacp president put it best that the worst thing to ever come out of affirmative action was like Clarence Thomas, right? Because that is an individual who George Bush chose because he was black, right? He wanted to um, replace the Supreme Court or 
put someone on the court who was black. But Clarence Thomas is a conservative, so there's not as much like hysteria over there. But when Joe Biden tried to do it and said, I want to I want to appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court because we've never had one. People automatically started screeching about that and claimed, oh, well, it shouldn't be based on race. It should be based on merit. Uh, Justice Kentaji Brown Jackson is the most qualified, the most experienced person in the Supreme Court. But still, there's this perception that, oh, no, nope, if merit wasn't considered at all, it just I, I think that Ellie put it best when he said, yeah, this is about mediocre white kids just having, you know, uh, the ability to get what they want. That's literally what this is just about. Which also goes to, to Bender's point, by the way, where even if, you know, there was no affirmative action for the Supreme Court. But people are claiming that's what's happening <laughs> because because Biden right, chose right. Kentaji Brown Jackson. Right, right. Yeah, it's just it's it's ridiculous. But, but, you know, and the, the the incredible thing is that these these right wingers uh, or even just uh, racist white people uh, or really little literally anyone of any race who thinks that uh, someone of a different race than theirs took their spot. Because I know that uh, the right loves to they're, they're so proud of having seemingly, um, you know, sort of uh, been able to bring uh, a number of, uh, you know, Asians into uh, their conservative ideology, at least on this one sort of topic here. Um, the number one thing, actually, that takes the place of someone trying to get into one of these schools isn't someone of equal background who's just a different race the number one thing is legacy admissions and they never address that they never mm -hmm. care to discuss the people who already went to these elite institutions who had means or people who didn't even go to these schools but give money so that they can be like a, a you know a, 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 a an honorary member of the school and then their kids get automatically accepted because of money or the prestige of their family name, or like you brought so up wealth before. in general makes it easier to get to college. You can yeah. have tutors, you yeah. can have a better housing situation if your parents don't have to work double jobs or they don't have to do app economy stuff or they can be home and they can love you and they can provide for you. All of these things factor in and not but, to mention but I think a lot of people who but. Everything we just mentioned is certainly accurate, but it, it's a different level for the legacy admissions. Like, yeah, yeah someone. No, saying, yes, I, I, I agree with you. I'm saying that they have a fucking they have an advantage that's unfair, you know, especially considering right. how it falls along racial lines. Yeah. I'll, also, like I know, like the obviously, like you were saying, the one percent way over overrepresented in like Ivy League schools and all that stuff. But even if you I was looking at high schools. You know, there are these like elite high schools that I think that to me, this is the big thing is like it, these elite high schools that kind of feed into these Ivy League schools and all that stuff. They invest what, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten times more than the average public school student. So to me, that's like part of the problem is like you're just reproducing that inequality. You're That's it. You're just reproducing it because you're investing more in the student who doesn't even really know what's happening. You know what I mean? So like, to me, like the affirmative action is such a light, it's such a mild correction. I mean, I think we need yeah. way, way more than mm -hmm. something as, as mild as like affirmative action, which is basically just like, you're still competing under the same, under the same quote unquote, you know, you, under the same cutthroat conditions, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, you know, try to do like some mild correction. It's of course you shouldn't get rid of, it, but it's like it's not. It's definitely not enough to me. I mean, that's yeah, just, I agree. That's yeah. what makes it so frustrating to me because it's like it's such a small thing. Absolutely. Like it barely makes a difference, and you can't even have that, right? It, it just it's really frustrating. So well, you know, when you zoom out, it's like how do you how do you actually fix bigger things, right? If if a small little policy like affirmative action is is so um, controversial, then how do you actually uh, address the lack of wealth in the black community? Like, can we ever actually get reparations under this, you know, under this environment? Can we ever actually eradicate systemic racism? Like, it just feels really hopeless. And I, I feel really upset about that because it just I, it's yeah. so frustrating. I think I think that's the whole game. The whole game is to keep the conversation there, to keep it in. It's to throw treats to the right 
also right. racist treats, but it's also to keep the conversation there, to keep the, like treats. to keep to keep it in the frame of meritocracy. Like, oh, this is interrupting mm. quote unquote meritocracy. Right. So we're fixing yeah. that, right? Instead of what we already know works. I mean, we have models for the best education systems in the world. I always talk about Finland. You make it public and you make it great, and then then you can and have spicy, something spicy take. Spicy yeah. take that people shouldn't pay out of pocket for secondary education. In fact, Absolutely. you know, a lot of Scandinavia pays you. They'll give you money for like, you know, stipends to be able to live and pay rent and eat and stuff like that. But like, I, I, I think we all want more doctors and nurses and like super brain cranium masters. So not I mean, only that, also, so uh, like, hey, exactly. we want, if we it's... want, we want more artists uh, studying yeah. under the great artists too. We want our mm -hmm. of the know, cranium masters of the more cranium masters. Yeah, totally. it feeds and into everything else. else. Yeah. Like, like you mentioned, Lance Healthcare. Like, there's this, there's this uh, conservative idea against universal healthcare. Well, we don't have enough doctors. Well, if you had public education and you, like, you enabled more people to be able to afford to be a doctor by it being free, then you would have more doctors. It'd be less of a problem. But, there, but so David, it's, it's, you're, it's, there's you're, so many levels to the system. You're mm -hmm. trying to solve a problem that they don't they don't want to solve. Like, exactly. The yeah. Like yeah. they're not. No, I, I know. They're, yeah. they're not no, know. actually worried about oh the medical. If everyone has universal health care, we're not get enough doctors. No, they just say that because they don't want to give universal health care. Obviously, obviously, yes. Right. The, yeah. I just I, yeah. that was in my mind because Tim Poole brought that up during uh, the debate with Emma, which I, I'll I'll bring a clip of that later because uh, that mm. was a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic yeah. job oh, by Emma on that show. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah.